Hello everyone and welcome to another showcase session. My name is Hal and today we're going to be using Darktable to edit this portrait. As usual in this series, there will be a link in the description where you can download this photo and try your hand at editing it yourself. One of the complaints that I often hear is that Darktable is not user friendly or that it's very difficult to get into or that it's too complicated and you need to spend lots of time studying it before you can get the best out of it. This is partly true. I mean, it's really powerful. You get to do things that, uh, or at least get into some details that might not be afforded in other editing software. And to get the most out of it, there is a series called Darktable from A to Z that I've heard is great that you can check. But what I wanted to do here is to just showcase how you can edit a photo without knowing a lot about what each module does. So I will try to not touch any settings and just use the defaults and the recommended settings or whatever is delivered with Darktable to edit this photo. All right, let's start. I disabled Filmic because we won't be using it. It's one of those that we probably won't use, but then if we use it, then we'll do that consciously. First, I'm going to go and just enable denoise, enable lens correction. I'm not gonna even look at them, just like they are. Now you can always remember that if you hover, you'll get a small description of what each module does. So if you know nothing about what the module does, here is where you can get a small summary. Okay, next I'm going to crop it. I'll click on the grid here where it says toggle guidelines just to see what I'm doing. I'll crop it a little bit, try to keep her in the middle, just to have a, a bit less space above her head and focus more on their face. After that, I'll just go to color calibration and I'll hover over it. It says perform color space corrections, such as white balance, channel mixing, conversions, and whatever. In this one, I'm going to click on that and use one of the AI detect from image surface. Not gonna touch it. Then I'm gonna go back and right click on tone equalizer and then try this one. Um, I would probably say this one would be okay. Yeah. That's just a preset that came with the module, as in with dark ta uh, table. I didn't have to add any of those. Then I'm going to right click on sigmoid. And well, I'll leave that till the end. After that, I'll go here as well. You can hover over those and see what kind of modules are in here. I don't have this one in my default. I'll just look for it. And here we have we have it. I'll right click on it, diffuse or sharpen. I'll put a denoise. Again, those are um, presets that came with it. If you right click on this one, multiple instances, right click creates a new instance. Do the same. I'll do another one for local contrast and another one for deep blur let's see soft and i can try medium okay i prefer medium i'll leave it as it is i think i would like to do this in black and white just because i can i'll do the same with color calibration right click to create a new one and then you have a lot of presets that came with it. I'll see if there is one that I like. The 
this one or that one. No, I think I like this one. All right. Then go back here. Right click on vignetting and put choose one. Lomo, you could just enable it. And don't get me wrong, you can open every module and get a much better effect if you just tweak it a bit. But I'm just trying to prove a point here that you can get a really nice edit just by using the defaults. Can you get a better edit if you actually tweak it? Of course, that's why we have Darkroom. That's why we have all of those options and controls and what have you. And if you'd like me to edit the same photo, but then in depth, then please let me know in the comments below and then I will do the next showcase with the same photo but then we'll go in depth into all of them and then we'll compare the results and see if we can do better than the defaults or not but for now let's see do, if we, do we still need anything uh, no watermark I don't want to I can, can add some grain just there is no preset but I can add if I wanted an old look but I don't contrast blur sensorized no we don't need any of those sharpen we've already did that in the diffuser sharpen module retouch no because there's no point in using the default I think we're done we can have a look here at what we've done I'm going to go back to where we cropped I'm going to take a snapshot then go back to the end and there you go that's the photo as it came out of the camera so to speak and that's the edit using only defaults and presets well except for the white balance but we used a, a AI generated white balance so that's one extra click there you go a whole edit of a raw photo using dark table like I said with nothing but presets and defaults it can be done it's probably not the best result that you can get well I would actually venture to say it's definitely not the best result you can get but that's why you have all the power to do all the things that you want to do in Darkroom. But can you just use it for quick edits and get a very good result? Yes, you can. Can you just start using it just like this while you actually get to learn each module apart and take your time? Yes, you can. And actually, that's what you should do. Start using it. Go back to the dark table a to z series and start going through each of the modules and learning them and then you can start adding your own touch in each module and improving your edits and you can go back to your photos and re-edit them and get a better result but you can start all right that's the end of my rant i hope that you found this video interesting and entertaining if you have any suggestions corrections or requests, please leave them in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.